Well, I'm curious to hear, I know earlier you mentioned you had some fun failure stories. So let's, let's transition to that. Let's talk about uh, some stories of failure and some of the lessons that you've come to learn from them. Yeah, this is so good because I talk about this on my show. I call the section segment, uh, embrace the F word, meaning failure. And I've got tons, man. Um, I don't know which one you, which bag you want me to pull out of, you know, um, you know, whether it was the real estate stuff or some failed businesses or relationships, it's it's up to you, man, how you want to slice it. Flip a coin in your mind and go with one. I'm, I bet they're all good. Yeah, I I'll share. I, so shiny object syndrome is 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 the curse that visionaries have, and um, I really need to update my bio because whenever people intro and thank you for not reading my intro because it is sort of outdated in terms of there's a term in there that I cringe when I hear it, and that is Eric is the quintessential serial entrepreneur, and <laughs> that sounded cool back in the day when it was written, you know, four or five years ago. Versus now where I'm way more aware that it is not cool because to me, that sounds like someone who's unfocused. Mm. It sounds like someone who's diluting their focus and not getting the results that they need. And that was me, bro. Like, uh, I'm like, I was confused. I needed to figure things out. Leaving corporate America, having this, you know, way over 10,000 hours required to be an expert in something. I probably like hundreds of thousands of hours in, in, in graphic design and arts and being a creative director. But then I, I I went to zero, right? I had to reset and I wanted to try something new, which was real estate. And I loved it for what it provided for me and my family, but I didn't love it, love it. Like, I don't love real estate. I don't love analyzing deals. Um, I don't love managing properties, but I do love the returns um, and all the other wonderful things. I love private lending. We lend, um, we lo- we lend money to investors as well. That's great. I don't have to do anything. It's passive, right? That's when I realized, oh, I like passive stuff. I just want to give someone money and then they go do the project and do the work. Um, so let me go start some other things. So On Air Brands was one of them. You know, a, a, It was a creative agency, a traditional creative ag- agency doing graphic design and websites and social media marketing. That was kind of the new thing. Um, and then it evolved into podcasting. So we started to build all of these things within On Air Brands itself. But then at the same time, I recognized that my real estate investing clients who we produce podcasts for um, wanted to get on shows and they also wanted to interview people um, that I knew. So I was like, why don't I just get everyone in the room together? And you know, all my friends from these meetings and networking and all the stuff that I do, they paid us uh, an entry fee, upwards of like two to three thousand dollars to to hang out with MC Lobster, the Cashflow Ninja, Matt Faircloth. Uh, you know, bigger pockets fame, all these people that they were fans of, they now had access to, to mm. either get on their shows, shake their hands and potentially do deals. So I did two or three of those live and it became a company. I was like, this is the new company. Forget on air brands. I'm like, I'm going to do this. Um, 2020 came. I was like, oh, now what do we do? So luckily I was with a team. I had to assemble a team that was really smart. And really good at events and promotions. So we we hit the ground running. We were the first out of the gate, I think, in 2020 of like uh, March, April. We had our first live event with like dozens of people that showed up. Our first wow. speaker was James Orsini from uh, VaynerMedia, Sasha Group. And um, and they, VaynerMedia, started paying attention and taking meetings with me and asking me, how are you doing this? Because no one was doing it yet. No one was like, awesome. hey man, how do you do this? Uh, you know, like, and I was like, number one, you need a really dynamic MC. You need to engage everyone in the room. So I was learning on the fly. I was making this stuff up and they were loving it. So um, now everyone's figured it out by now, but it got me into Vayner's good graces. So this is the good part of the story. The bad part of the story is um, I started, uh, I hired them, like they started to coach me and um, had a wonderful opportunity to to, to chat with Gary uh, on occasions and one particular time and it got produced as a podcast. So anyone can go out there and listen to it. <clears throat> he was like, Eric, number one, um, y- y- you have no patience. He's like, you just got here. And you're like, where's the results? He's like, be patient. Right? He says that all over his socials. He goes, but also your product stinks. I'm like, what are you talking about? He said, um, yeah, your product, which for this company, PodMax, the product was the podcasters the people that were interviewing the, the the paying ticket guests. He goes, yeah, your podcasters suck. 
<laughs> Dude, that was such a huge, like he probably has hundreds and hundreds of podcasters that hate him now because he said that about them on his show. But what I learned from there was in order for me to take this a company to the next level, I have to do what he said, which is you need to get in touch with the top 200 podcasters in your space and get really close to them and then ask them for favors or ask them or pay them, whatever. I looked at that business model, Justin, and I was like, I don't want to do that. Like, I don't feel this. I'm not passionate about doing that. And I, I, I had since then decided after long, you know, conversations with business partners and other people on the team to let it go. It's like, let's mm -hmm. pause all activity. We had Caleb Silver, who is wow. the CEO of um, Investopedia scheduled for the next event. And I had to call him like, dude, I'm so sorry. You know, like we're pausing it. And he's like, well, when's the next one? I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. So um, yeah, that was a big lesson learned. And dude, I never look back at that as necessarily a failure failure because so much happened as a result of creating that company. Like I yeah. would not be in with the Vayner Media. They would not be someone that sends us clients and we send them clients. Like that whole relationship, the whole C-suite within Vayner, uh, are all, they're all like on my my quick dial, which yeah. is amazing. And then not just that, but how Elrod, all these amazing people that I not I would never have had an opportunity to, to even get into their network um, uh, if I didn't have an event for them to speak during 2020. So yeah. it was it was really good good experience. I love that. It's such a good example of, you know, walking through a door of failure and then four or five more on the other side of potential opportunities. I love that because I think a lot of people get stuck where they just don't want to open a door uh, figuratively and uh, they just stay and they don't try anything. So I love that. It's like you tried it. Uh, and a lot of people would say that you did really well. Uh, maybe Gary had other ideas and uh, for, for future, but I feel like you were doing it well. And then, like you said, it just led to other things. So I think that's such a good example. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, Gary, I took his his information and advice with a grain of salt because admittedly, he, he didn't know anything and probably still to a degree know much about the podcast industry. So yeah. um, that ask, what he, what he tasked us to do, um, I don't think he realized how difficult that was. I mean, I, it's anything's possible. We could have done yeah. it. Um, but yeah, he, if anyone knows Gary or fans of Gary, he, he offers advice with little information because of time. He doesn't have a whole lot of time to chit chat yeah. with you for, for hours and hours and go deep. So he gets a very basic high level understanding. And then he's like, boom, advice, 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 advice. Um, so yeah, I, that, that, I always consider the source and where they're coming from. And then also what's their experience and knowledge in this field yeah. um but anyway it was it was it was a blessing in disguise justin because i then took all that energy passion and focus from that company and put it into this what we're doing yeah. with on-air brands and then that's when we started to be like oh this is what focus looks like <laughs>